Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Uh, a 40 year old man came to the ER with uh, complaints of scratch from a sugar glider. On initial 10 second assessment, uh, patient was uh, airway was patent, breathing wise. Uh, Go to local exam. Yeah, local exam. Uh, locally, uh, when we uh, examined the wound, patient was having an abrasion of around 1 into 0.3 centimeter mm. uh, in the um, medial aspect just below the pump <coughs> over the wrist. Uh, it was just an abrasion and little bleed was there which was already dried off. Mm. Uh, we immediately asked the patient to mm. wash his hand under the running tap water mm. with soap for around 15 minutes. Mm. Uh, then uh, coming to sample history, patient had uh, come with complaints of scratch by a sugar glider when he was trying to pet it. Uh, the uh, wound was over the uh, medial aspect of the uh, left hand or on the wrist. The patient uh, initially when he uh, like got the scratch, there was a little uh, bleed which he washed off immediately uh, without soap for like around 1 to 2 minutes and then he came to the ER. Uh, he is not allergic to any known uh, medications and uh, there is no previous history of vaccination for rabies. So uh, we had inquired about his uh, TT uh, immunization status and he said that he to took it one year back. So uh, we did not give him uh, any uh, TT dose. Uh, then we started the patient with, uh, we calculated the dose needed for monoclonal antibody. Since it was a category 3 bite, since there was mild bleed was there. So we have to give him both injection, uh, vaccine as well as the immunoglobulin. So uh, we went ahead with monoclonal antibody which is available in our hospital. Uh, that is Rebishil. Uh, so that dosage is calculated 3.3 international units per kg body weight. Uh, since the patient was around 70 uh, kgs, it came to around 231 units. So we required 3 ampules, 2 complete and 1 uh, half of it. And that was infiltrated maximum around the wound and whatever was left, we put an IM in the same arm and on the opposite uh, hand, that is the right hand, we gave him the uh, rabies vaccine. Uh, the zero dose was given and the dates were mentioned and accordingly, he was asked to come and take the five doses okay. for his IM vaccination. So. It's one of the common scenarios that all we deal, but this animal is very rare. Mm. We haven't encountered uh, uh, such thing. It is not a wild. It's, I think he's growing it as a pet. Uh, he uh, near his friend's house. Okay. So, uh, the whether that animal was vaccinated, anything? Any? We are not very sure. Okay. So, uh, let's uh, discuss animal bites. So, what are the key questions that when a patient with animal bite come to you or animal bite? What are the key questions that we need to answer? So first, let's start with the patient. So with the patient, we'll start off. The most importantly, what is the category of the bite? So category one, category two, category three. And what is the immunity status of the patient? One immunity, what I am asking, any time he has previously taken a rabies vaccine, or else he is having any diabetes history, all those immunosuppression, anything is there, malignancy is getting treated. So these are the two questions from the patient side that we need to ask for and whether he has taken any pre-exposure prophylaxis also. Mm. So whether he had any previous vaccination history that will cover that answer also. So that is the two important questions from the patient side that what we need to ask for. So category one, as we all just licking, mm -hmm. category two, uh, there is a scratch yeah. without bleeding, without category three is bleeding, but for uh, an immunosuppressed patient, category, uh, category 2 itself, we will start administering uh, monoclonal antibody and rabies immunoglobulin. So that is a basic two difference between immunocompromised and patient with who is having good immunity. So that is the patient side. Now let's see the source side. What animal has been bitten by him, whether it is prone to develop rabies in India? So that is the next question and whether that animal is any time vaccinated, domestic cat, domestic dog and all will be vaccinated. So this will be the next question that we need to answer. So which are the proven animals that will cause rabies in India? That will be dogs, cats, then a The majority fox. of them are dogs and cats. cats. Followed by next will be you can, maybe you can call it as domestic animals and we have peri domestic animals like next category will be monkeys can be there. It will be buffaloes, buffaloes. and sheep, goat, etc. Mm -hmm. Then you have the then you have the wild animals like monkeys, monkeys fox, fox yes. mongoose and all those things. Mm. So the, these are the common animals that has been reported to cause rabies in India. Mm. But outside India, there has been case reports of by use of bats, rats and all. Mm. But 
we don't have any major case reports from this so these are the major chunk is by dog next will be by cat and these are the other animals that we need to suspect for a rabies this supraglandum there is never listed you can go through the article there is nothing is available and it's one of the rare so that's why we didn't want to take a chance whether to give vaccination or not to give vaccination so that is regarding the animals that can cause rabies in india next important question what is the immunization status of that animal so what will you say many of the patients will come and tell the doctor the dog is completely vaccinated why should i take vaccine so what will be the answer for that even if uh, the dog is uh, completely vaccinated we still have to advise full vaccination to the patient okay. if the uh, if the patient is not himself uh, previously vaccinated then full dose vaccination is recommended mm. uh, when what will you say that the dog when we can say the dog is adequately vaccinated yearly the vaccination has been taken and it is documented and it is documented and the quality of vaccine what administered to the animal is good we can't just say that the quality of vaccination is very good we need to be very sure because the cold chain management we are not very aware of these things so once you are damn sure okay the cold chain everything is maintained and the dog is properly vaccinated there is a documentation and the dog's age is more than one year Yes. The dog age is more than one year. Vaccinated more than three months uh, after his age, and over the last past one year. Past one year, mm -hmm. and complete dose of vaccination has been taken. Then you can consider okay, maybe the patient can take a risk. But still, as a healthcare provider, we recommend them to take vaccination as well as immunoglobulin, depending upon the category of the wound. So the vaccination status of the animal is basically you have to. It is irrespective. but when we are discussing for the sake of discussion we are telling but uh, because of the issue that whether the vaccine has been administered properly whether the cold chain we don't know so that part we have to tell the patient and he have to convince them and document it sometimes they will not be ready to take immunoglobulin or vaccine so you have to document them and you need to let them know so that is the next question okay so now uh, the question arises i have been bitten by a dog like one year back I have taken the full doses of vaccine and human rabies immunoglobulin and monoclonal antibody now again i have been bitten by a dog so what should the advice that i should be taking whether i should take the full dose whether i should take hrig whether only i should take how many doses sir so if a uh, already vaccinated person mm. if patient comes to us vaccinated you have to add i will say fully, fully vaccinated, vaccinated. Mm. if already fully vaccinated patient and patient comes to us within 3 months of getting the vaccine mm. then only wound washing is indicated mm. no need to take anything else mm. but if after 3 months patient comes then we have to take it as re exposure so then 0 and 3 dose 0 uh, and the third uh, day dose two is doses. indicated two doses and immunoglobulin is not indicated in a immunoglobulin re exposure only once, once in, in lifetime, lifetime. so totally once in lifetime only immunoglobulin monoclonal antibody and all only once in lifetime and rest of all those things mm. we can want there are two thoughts school of thoughts you just give one booster and there is another thing 03 so we usually recommend 0 and 3 that is first uh, day of bite and third day of bite so two doses is what is recommended and never human rabies immunoglobulin okay so uh, that is i will ask you another scenario uh, somebody is coming to you uh, doctor have been bitten by a dog 15 or 20 days back okay it was a category 3 bite okay the he didn't go anywhere and now he is coming and telling the dog died so what will be your action plan so here now immunoglobulin is no more indicated because within the first 7 days we have to give immunoglobulin but you vaccine we have to give whenever patient comes within 1 year till patient comes with history of bite then we have to give full dose vaccine so the key thing is that immunoglobulin should not be given okay. after one week days, yeah. only use of giving immunoglobulin is within one week okay. after one week don't give immunoglobulin so you can give the further doses of vaccine okay. irrespective of the time frame when the patient is presenting to you okay. so uh, the status of the dog died or not it's irrespective you have to treat like he is coming for the okay. day one okay. now another more question uh, doctor suppose i was supposed to take vaccine yesterday i missed the dose i am coming back for the dose today what should be done we should give sir uh, first 0 third and seventh these uh, doses should be given within first 10 days even if it is missed if patient comes we need to administer the doses so from the dose to the next dose you need to calculate 14 days okay. suppose they are missing 037 they have taken 037 14th dose they have missed so 14 those you administer that 14 those they are coming on a 16th or a 17th day you give it on 17th day from there you calculate 14 days and give the last dose so that is a thing but if they are missing 037 
then that is a difficult situation then if there is a high risk so whenever they are coming back you administer the dose and from that day you calculate further so that is the uh, guidelines for that so these are the common questions that everyone will have doubt in their mind and they will be having dilemmas what to be done next question uh, very commonly there have been a lot of calls and asking friends calling me and asking me the cattle is died of rabies i have consumed the milk of that cat uh, that uh, from that cattle from that cow whether i will get rabies or not whether i should take vaccination or not so uh, usually uh, it is no need for taking vac uh, vaccine if uh, con if you consume milk from any rabies infected uh, animal but uh, we should prevent try not to consume but uh, if consume no vaccine indicator no vaccine there is no need of vaccination so you should try to uh, avoid consuming but as of now there is no report of rabies being spread from the infected milk so that can be avoided so that is the next dilemma now the next question comes suturing suturing on uh, dog bite or uh, rabies dog bite whichever it is whether you should allow suturing whether you should not allow suturing as far as possible we don't allow suturing mm. allow the wound to bleed properly but if at all required if it is a very deep wound first we have to administer human uh, immunoglobulin uh, rabies immunoglobulin and after that only loose sutures are allowed uh, that is very important why it is important why do we don't want to suture the answer is very simple we don't want to do manipulation around the wound that is a main reason we are taking deep bite maybe from the skin we are taking it more deeper suppose you have given immunoglobulin you can suture so somebody has got bite over the face and all uh, there is actively bleeding major blood vessel there is a bleeding we definitely need to achieve a hemostasis so after immunoglobulin or uh, your monoclonal antibody you can suture the wound and again the suturing the wound and edges should be very loosely yeah. just approximation should be done it should not be never never tightly right. sutured and second if the patient is immunocompromised and definitely there is a chance of infection, infection. leading on to uh, hand space or whichever space infection yes. it will lead on yes. so that is another important thing that you need to keep in your mind so that is immunoglobulin now uh, what are the different types of uh, three four uh, uh, immunoglobulin that is two immunoglobulins mm -hmm. what is available is equine rabies and human, rab human rabies we use mostly human, human rabies, rabies. Dosing of each, can you tell? Sir, uh, equine rabies will be 40 international units per kg. Test dose needed or not? No, we should not give equine test. Rabies. Equine rabies. Also equine rabies also needed. Equine Atlas rabies, to, uh, uh, because it is very prone to develop anaphylaxis. anaphylaxis. You should give. Uh, Human rabies, there is no need of test dose. Uh, HRIG, no need of test dose. It is 20 international per unit per kg. Uh, now, the thing that comes, you have calculated the body weight uh, and there is a category 3 wound, which is hardly 1 centimeter long. Uh, Okay, so you want to administer around 3 ml is what you have calculated. You said for this patient. It is hardly 1 centimeter. So what will you do with the uh, rest of the immunoglobulin or uh, monoclonal antibody? Uh, so the rest we inject, intra, uh, sorry, IM injection we give to the patient, mm. whatever is left. But that, even if we don't give, it is fine because that... May, the action of that IM injection is not as much See, there. the idea should be whatever maximum possible, Local you need to inject it. around the wound. Mm. And... See, for example, four of us have got mm. dog bite give to the next and person. we can give to the next, next person. person. Mm. So we can give, use that to the next, next person. person. So you can uh, use that. Uh, you don't need to waste that resource by giving us an army. Mm. So you can use to the next person. If it is sterile, everything, the mm. whatever is that rust, you can use it for the next person. If at all, you can give it as an IM distal to the site that you have administered. Uh, Vaccine, rabies vaccine. vaccine and never never ever give rabies vaccine yes, in the gluteal region, region. Yes. it should be never been given in the gluteal, gluteal region yes. deltoid or androlateral aspect thigh. of the thigh so mm. that is the next most important thing that you need to keep in your mind then regarding the first aid mm. we we are coming to the first the last mm. can you tell me the first aid of dog bite uh, so we have to wash first uh, wash with soap and any uh, iodine uh, containing uh, wash either chlorhexidine or beta iodine how long uh, 15 minutes minimum we have to wash it so that it will wash away whatever and decrease the bacterial load also if any secondary infection is to be there. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, uh, intradermal we usually prefer or IEM? We usually do IEM. IEM. So, if intradermal, what is the difference between intradermal and... Uh, 
dose will be different. So internal MRI, we will need only 0.1 ml and it will be two site injection. Days also will be different. It will be 0, 3, 7, 28. IM, it will be uh, at least uh, 0.5 ml injections and it will be one site. And, it will be and again, when you are giving internal MRI injection, a wheel should come should nicely. Come, uh, if at all, it is again not effective. Uh, so the wheel should rise yeah. and only it is an effective vaccination. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, two important things that we need to give. We have two options. Mm -hmm. Whether go to immunoglobulin or monoclonal antibody, vaccine we usually have and uh, another question that I wanted to ask you, uh, doctor I have been taken vaccination uh, from an uh, other hospital, now I, have, I cannot go back there, I have come here, I want to complete my vaccination schedule. So uh, how will you tackle this? So he had taken three doses from outside and that brand is not available. So you will get getting a call, that brand is not available in your hospital, so what can be done? So whatever brand we have, we can administer that. Mm. It is advisable not to change the regimen or the dose uh, or the brand. But if it is unavoidable circumstances, then whatever is available, we should administer. And continue the rest with the same uh, brand that is available. Available. So that is one easier thing. But one more thing is that maximum you try purified duct embryo. Whatever be the type of vaccination they have tried, you try to adjust with that. So that is the, whatever be the method, viral cell vaccine is there, purified duct embryo is there. Whatever be the type they have taken, we try to continue that if it is available, but if it is not available, it is better than nothing. So you, you have to tell to the patient and family what all things can happen and you need to tell them and uh, you need to continue as per the schedule. So the key information is what you need to remember, what is the source patient, what is the source animal, uh, what is the source animal and many questions come, we will get every time, I have got a rat bite at house, I was sleeping, some rat came and waited me. And uh, what should be the advice, whether to be taken or not to take vaccine? If it is a uh, rat inside the house domestic, uh, then we don't have to take a rabies prophylaxis. But if it's a wild outside in the forest or somewhere it is bit, then we need to take. So simple thing, any wild animal, definitely you need to give vaccine. Yeah. So that is the easiest thing. But uh, w for this animal super glider, we don't know yeah. what is the background, what is the thing. And any other animal, whether it has got uh, an... Uh, there is no, maybe the first case reported will be from this. Maybe bats, there are no response, but when we are getting patients with bad bite, definitely we will give. Even if it is not indicated, we will definitely mm -hmm. give. Pre-exposure prophylaxis, okay. those who are working in this, uh, those who are having pets, pets at home, uh. they can definitely take pre-exposure prophylaxis. What is the regimen for that? It is 0, 7, then between 21 to 28 days, one dose. One dose has to be taken. So that is pre-exposure. Mm -hmm. So it is better that those who are having uh, uh, domestic animals at home to better to take pre-exposure prophylaxis mm -hmm. so that uh, rabies can be prevented. So the most key message is rabies is 100% fatal. We don't have any treatment for rabies. So we need to prevent it. So how to prevent it? Either by pre-exposure or by doing a proper first aid by taking adequate post-exposure prophylaxis and vaccinating the animals. So that is the most important thing that we should be doing, vaccinating the animals so that the rabies spread can be avoided. Anything else that you want to add on? Immunocompromised. Yeah, you category 1, category 2, category 3, what all to be done, you can just say. Yeah. Who all need category 1, we need vaccine mm -hmm. or uh, we don't need anything. Mm -hmm. Category 2, we need vaccine only. Vaccine only. If it is immunocompromised, then immunoglobulin plus vaccine. Vaccine or monoclonal antibody. Category 3, definitely. Immunoglobulin, vaccine. Vaccine. So, anything else that you want to cover? Nothing, sir. So, we uh, we didn't discuss a lot, but what would be the common doubts that uh, we, regarding rabies vaccination, I think we have covered. HIV and pregnant patients should take vaccine. Should take vaccine. Not contraindicated. Not contraindicated. Fine. Okay. Fine. Thank you.